Tune In Tuesday. My name is Sharon Rogers and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And every second and fourth Tuesday, I come to you with a class. Now, this online class is free to view, but if you would like the project kit, simply place an order of $35 or more in my online store and I will make sure I send you the contents of that kit, which is usually double the amount of projects that I'm showing in the class. Tonight we'll be focusing on the Cracker and Treat Box dies. This is way more versatile than you probably think it is. Not only does it come with a great die in it, it comes with lots of smaller dies that are perfect for adding sentiments to cards and other projects that you may have. I'm also going to show you how you can create some really cute cards with leftovers, with the scraps from the die itself. Let's get started. The Cracker and Treat Box dies feature one very large die. This uh, fits nicely into the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, the large one. It does not fit the mini one. It, it is about, it's just under five inches this way and just under six inches this way. So it will fit nicely on a piece of six by six but you can cut a piece that is five by six. I think in this case, this is five by seven, um, but you can see that the five inch fits on there. It also comes with several label dies. So there are seven labels that you can create. And then there are these fun stars and hearts that you can use. Um, you can use the hearts and stars themselves or you can use these as sort of like little little windows if you'd like. Same thing with these labels, you can use them as windows and we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's show you first how to create one of these boxes. We'll need to bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we will need our regular plates. So we will need plate number one and plate number two plate number three, then we will put on our, keep them off the camera a little bit, then we will put on our designer series paper and our die. Now, this has a pretty um, straight edge, so we want to make sure, and this is one of the reasons why I like to use the five inch width instead of the six inch width of paper, you put that on a diagonal so that the edge doesn't go through all at once. It will sneak off into a corner and then the rest will pass. It'll make it a little bit easier on your machine. You won't get quite that big bang when you're rolling it through. In fact, you can see I didn't get any big bang at all. When I take this out, Diamonds all fall out, and don't throw those away. I'll show you what you can do with those afterwards in a later project. But here we have this, and there are score lines already in it. In fact, if I turn over the die, you can see where the score lines are going to be. And they're going to be in lots of different places, so lots of places to fold. And you can fold this, you can use a bone folder, or if you're using just designer series paper, you can go ahead and just use your fingers. It will fold nicely. So there's in one direction. Now I, I do find that this direction, it's easiest if I just pinch each individual section to get them started. And then I go ahead and press down and Kind of fold back on the ones in the middle of the diamonds and then you can I, I'm not sure I think these fold back as well honestly I don't even necessarily worry about these end ones they kind of take care of themselves when the box is being formed 
Let's see. Make sure I'm getting these on the fold line. And you can see them. You probably can't see them on camera, but you can see them quite easily in person. I'm going to fold back on this. And I'm going to show you a comparison of folding the this um, score line and not folding this one. Let's see how different it looks. Now, to join the box, you can use regular glue and you're going to put the glue on one section so you can see there are one two three four five six sections oops i don't need that much glue i was squeezing while i was counting i'm going to put the glue on one section the problem with the glue is that you're you're probably going to get your hands all messy. Oops, see, like I just did. You can't really fold this over on itself flat because there's an even number of pieces. But what you can do is sort of work this one in, push it into the corner, and bring it up. And then I, what I like to do is I like to just align these pieces on the ends Make sure they're all put together nicely. They should line up perfectly. And then you can go ahead and squeeze the middle together. Now, can you see I have, I have some glue on my fingers. I'll show you another way of doing it as well. Um, because I'm going to be tying the ends, I don't know that I actually need a really strong glue. Um, probably seal will work just fine provided what you're putting in here isn't super duper heavy. Okay, and so now I have my treat box and these ends are just going to pinch in to form the cracker. I'm gonna tie those shut with a ribbon. So you can use whatever you want. You can use some thin twine. You could use some of the sparkly ribbon. Um, this has a lot of pink flecks in it, so I probably won't choose that one for the blue. You can use um, some of the crinkle ribbon, which I have right here. Let's go ahead and do this. Now you can use a, a tie it in a bow, or you can tie it in a knot. I'm going to be making a lot of these, so I think I'm just going to use a knot. And honestly, if I'm making a lot of these, I probably would use some uh, twine, crochet ribbon, whatever. I'm gonna knot one end. Now remember, if you knot it, only way to open it is to break it open, which is fine. It is called a cracker, so they are meant to do that. And let's go ahead and do this end as well. Oop. But before you put it on the other end, you got to remember to fill it. Now, what goes in here? Lots of things go in here. Here's the first thing I'm going to be putting in. I had to go to Walmart tonight to buy some candy so you can have some things in here. I have found that five Hershey Kisses fit in there very nicely. You sometimes can fit in a sixth but it does sort of come out towards the end. I just like to keep it five. That's kind of a nice number. You know, I'm a kind of a numbers person. I, I like odd numbers better anyway. They just appeal to me better. Don't know why, probably because I'm odd. But there we have a little cracker. And we could then die cut a label out. So we could choose one of these labels to tie on here. Uh, probably would have been smart to put it on here before if I'm gonna tie it onto the end. But I could cut it out and put it right across here. Let's see, let's uh, go ahead and let's, let's do this one. This is where my scrap bin comes in handy. I'm going to come in here and just find some little scraps. 
I know you have a lot of them just like I do. This one's a big, big scrap. It's not very little. So I usually try to find the little ones first. So I know I have more blue ones in here. Now, I my scraps are limited to what that fits, and it fits a color family. I do put the in colors in with one of my families, um, but if my scrap bin gets so full that I can't put more in it, then I throw a scrap away, or I make room, or I figure out how to use my scraps. I do not want to be overflowing with scraps for those someday projects that I'm gonna use it for. So let's go ahead and bring this in. Now, if you had uh, a saying like maybe Happy Easter or for you, or you wanted to write somebody's name on it, um, that would be something you could do before. If you're writing somebody's name on it, you can certainly do that after. And that's what I'm gonna do with this one, I think. So here we have just a nice little stitched piece and that can go right there. Let's go ahead and glue it on. Just takes a little bit of glue. centered in here this would make a great party favor you could put people's names on it oh how'd that happen you could um make it as a, a place setting so for maybe a wedding or some sort of event where you you have assigned seats and then we can go ahead and get out maybe some bling and my take your pick tool. Go ahead and I'll put one there. So it's almost like these are anchoring it down. I put my name in there and good to go. Cute little treat. to show you how to alter the die. I have another sheet of designer series paper here and I'm going to bring in um, the rest of the dies for a second and I think I'm going to go with, hmm, well let's use the hearts but you could use any one of these. I'm going to use the hearts. I'm going to put the hearts right there in the middle. We're gonna be creating a very tiny window. Technically, three very tiny windows. And so here we have get these out of the way. I am going to show you what to do with some of these. That will be my last project. Again, we're going to just fold on all these score lines. And notice I say all of them, but I'm not doing those ones way on the edges. They don't really need to be folded. Why are the score lines there then, Sharon? I don't know. But I don't think I need them. I haven't, I haven't scored on any of these. I mean, I haven't folded them. They do tend to fold themselves into that shape though. So I guess um, it'll just make it a little bit more crisp for you if you want to do that. I'm also going to show you another way to close these up. 
able to adhere it together anyway. So there we have this little hole, this little peekaboo. Let's go ahead and form this. I'm going to use some tear and tape. So if you don't want to get your fingers messy, you can certainly use tear and tape at least on this edge right here. All right, where's my take your pick tool? Well, it's around here somewhere. There we go. I didn't need it. I'm going to fold this over. And again, when I'm folding it over, I try to line these pieces up and these pieces up. And then by, def oops, then by default, the other one's going to be good. Just bring my fingers in here. Press that closed. So there we go. We've got that. Let's go ahead and bring in a little bit of this stuff. It's a little bit longer piece. This is probably, I don't know, eight inches, but it's very thin, so I can get away with having it shorter. If I had a wider ribbon, I'd probably need more than eight inches to tie it. When tying a bow, it is a little bit tricky in here, only because it, there's this dip in here. So your fingers want to get closer to it, but can't always. I'm just trying to finagle the ends here to how I want them. There we go. A little bit better. All right. And then I can put some other goodies in. Let's see, what else did I find? I find the store. Oh, look, I found some sweet tart jelly beans. It is just a shame that I have to buy all this candy to show you what can go in here. Oh, wait, what I didn't, what I didn't show you. Oh, that one got away. So that one's getting eaten. I probably should have, oops, I need to I need to put a little bit of glue down here just like we did before just to make it a nicer finished project so you see how this is kind of rounded if I had folded on the score lines that are there it would not be rounded it would be a little bit more square I kind of like the rounded look myself put a little bit of glue in there there we go. Now I can put the candy in there. Now, normally if I'm giving this to somebody that uh, I'm pretty close to, I won't care that it's unwrapped candy. I was giving these to my kids or my husband or myself. I would be okay with it being unwrapped. A little bit more and there we go and then there's just a little peek in here and I could put a window sheet behind this certainly if I were using one of the the um, rectangular windows in here I would definitely want to put a window sheet because um, otherwise the candy would fall out but here's just a little little peek of what's inside you could put M&Ms inside all sorts of things we just got to tie up the other end. Oh, my bow's on the wrong side on the other one. I'm going to have to retie that one. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to supersize this. I'm starting with a piece that is five inches, like the, all the other ones that we've been working, but only four inches long. I'm going to put my die in here. And I'm gonna bring it mostly to the end here. And this is going to cut, you can see that it's it's um, leaving some off here. So let me go ahead and put the top plate on, run that through. Oop, I shifted, hold on. Now 
also did an angle. So we're gonna hear that click and pop. And here's another one. That's why you wanna angle. So we have something that looks like this, half a popper. It's more than half a popper because um, that middle is almost all complete, but close enough. We're gonna call it half a popper. All right, let's line that up. Got it angled this time. It's so much smoother. Okay, so we have these two pieces and we can join them together. but I have a better idea. I'm gonna bring in a piece of window sheet. Hard to see on camera, I know. But I wanna have it so that it is wide enough to get the whole piece in there. Let me see if I can find a way to show you this window sheet. Hmm. Yeah. I, you'll just have to take my word for it. There it is. And I only care about cutting this middle section out. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that so I don't waste my window sheet. And I, let's say I only want it about two inches wide. That'll be good. I'm gonna cut this to two inches. All right, I have a piece that's two by five, and I want to make sure that the die goes over it. And I have this middle section here. So I want to make sure it's a little, it's lined up. You may want to, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw in another piece of designer series paper so that I can sort of see where I'm cutting. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty straight. Sorry, it doesn't show up very well on camera. So now I have this piece of window sheet, and I think you can see the score lines in it. I'm gonna go ahead and take, um, this is going to go to the inside of this piece. Uh, and so I'm gonna, make sure that it does fold around but because the score it's harder to get this to you really need to burnish it start the folds because you can see where the folds are supposed to be and then just burnish all the way around just put some crisper folds in there. This is definitely a project um, that takes a little bit more time. So if you are liking this quick and simple of the Cracker Box, keep it the regular size and not the extra large version. Right, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my, and I, what I what I do want to do here first, because it's the inside, it's getting wrapped with something. The inside's always got a little bit smaller piece to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this edge. You can do that with a with paper trimmers or scissors. And I want the tear and tape to go on the outside of this, it'll go on the inside of the others. Let's 
So when you get your project kit in the mail, for those of you who place an order in my online store, a qualifying order, um, you will have this piece, you'll want to burnish it. Um, I will have, I will have the, or maybe I'll burnish it for you, we'll see. Um, but I will have the sticky strip applied to it as well. For the rest of them, the adhesive is going to be, you'll have to get the adhesive yourself. Let's go ahead and fold these two, just so they're ready to go. backing off the sticky strip. Let's see, a little bit easier with my take your pick tool. I want to make sure this is straight on here and that the score lines from the blue line up with the score lines on the window sheet. You could also put the adhesive on the window sheets, I mean on the designer series paper, if you'd rather do it that way. So I'm making sure my score lines are matching up. There we go. And so now we want to go ahead and adhere it all together. Now the only thing is I can't adhere this middle because it will show. So something to keep in mind, um, unless you decide that you're going to cover it up and then you'll be fine there. But I'm going to just add my sticky strip where it doesn't show. Not sticky strip, tear and tape. How many years has it been? Yikes. I don't know what I mean though, right? Most of you remember what tear and tape was too. All right. When I go ahead and I line this end up, and I make sure my, my pieces are doing well. Uh, I'm going to have to do the centerpiece. The problem, a little bit, is that the center is very stiff. So there we go. Put that in there nicely. And let's go ahead and, ooh, my, I found my glue cover. Yikes. Cut it off this, which may result in a clogged tip because, oh, it's working okay. But you really want to put the cover back on all the time when you're using it. Otherwise, it'll get clogged and then you won't be able to use it. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to work this. Once you've got one half of it done, the other half goes pretty easily. There we go. And just glue this little tab in. You could also use glue dot here if you wanted to. You probably all figured out that green glue is my favorite adhesive anyway. So no surprise I'm using that. All right, and so now we are ready to do something else to this. We're ready to fill it, but look at how, so here is the regular one, and see how much longer it is. About twice as long. 
to go ahead and bring in now this is the in color twine but I think that the Tahitian Tide's pretty close to this, so I'm going to use it. Just to be festive. We'll tie in a bow. Probably would be better to use something a little bit thicker on such a a big project, but we will make do with this. Even off the ends. Now, what am I gonna put in here? I happen to have some M&Ms. I only bought a little box because I'd eat the whole box if I bought a big box. What a pity, not all of them fit in there. That means I'm gonna have to eat some, but see, look, you can see them right through the middle. Mm. There we go. Got a nice little fun treat holder. We just need to finish this guy up. And then I can finish up the M&Ms that didn't fit in here. My job is so difficult, preparing these classes for you, having to buy the candy and Make sure it doesn't go to waste. Aye. All right. But it actually does go to waste. It goes to my waste. And so there we have another treat container. ahead and created three more treat boxes and I filled these two and I'm going to fill this third one with something different and that's packages of, of Smarties. Now these just barely fit in there. Um, these little tie ends things they want to kind of stick out but you can just press them in there and in case you're wondering this length of ribbon that I'm using um, I can measure it out on my ruler, but I could also just use the length of the die. It's about six inches, and that is uh, about um, what I can comfortably tie with and not have too much excess. So you can see this wants to, the blue wants to pop out, so I just kind of tuck it in there a little bit. And when I just pull on the, uh, on the ends, it seals it off and keeps it in there. And I do try to make sure that my knots are roughly in the same uh, same sides, just because I think it looks prettier that way. So I have three little treat boxes. I'd probably put arrange them this way. But what can we do with this? I mean, it, if I wanted to give this to a family or just, um, just to give one person, you know, a, a trio of treats, then what could I do? Well, what I can do is create a little gift box for them. And let me show you how to do that. We're going to bring in our paper trimmer and a piece of fresh freesia cardstock. The dimensions I'm going to be using for this because I want my box to fit three of these, what I did to create the box, I, I mean, I did the work for you, was I measured across, oops, there goes my die, and it's about four inches. I'm gonna create a little bit more space in case I want to put these so that the ends face up. So I'm gonna make it four and a quarter, and then the length of this, oops, let's measure from the zero, the length of it is about five, so I'm gonna make it um, five and a quarter. So five and a quarter by four and a quarter, and the depth here, if I were to measure it, um, is about one and a, 
one and a quarter maybe. So let's say one and a quarter just so that they can fit in there nicely. So when I'm creating this, let me show you my math here. Um, I'll just use this. Uh, I don't want to use a piece of cardstock, that's for sure. Let me tear off a piece of paper here and do a little bit of math. So I want five and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I want one and a quarter inches on the sides that turn up. And that's going to have to be on all four sides. So that means that I'm adding two and a half inches, you know, two times one and a quarter is two and a half inches to this four and a quarter. So two and a half plus four and a quarter is six and three quarters. And this was five and a quarter. So five and a quarter plus two and a half is seven and three quarters. So I need a piece of paper that starts six and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So I know that the width is eight and a half. I'm going to, in order to minimize waste, I'm going to therefore cut my um, cardstock at the six and three, what did I say? Six and three quarters mark. I have a nice piece for my scrap bin. And remember the other one was seven and three quarters. So I'll go ahead and trim that down a little bit as well. And of course, this is nice for little labels. Now I could use my paper trimmer here to do this next step, but I prefer my Simply Scored tool. And I wanna score at one and a quarter on all four sides. All right. So I didn't have to do any math there. I just looked at the one and a quarter mark and screwed that all the way around. I'm going to bring in my snips here and I'm going to snip just to this first score line on all these vertical score lines. And I really do want to um, angle cut miter just a little bit here. That will, and I'm mitering it on the outside tab, not the inside one. That's just going to help me lay things a little bit flatter. I'm going to do it on the opposite side as well. On the outside tab is where I'm cutting. All right, get rid of those scraps. And I'm now I'm going to fold. And I've been die cutting a bunch of these tree boxes and so I have lots of little diamonds everywhere. It's kind of hiding a lot of my stuff. And then to form the box, we're going to just fold these up like this. And you can you do want to attach with something strong, so I would suggest either the green glue or the or tear and tape. Um, you can do seal plus as well. I know that a lot of my customers do not prefer seal plus. Um, I like it now that I know how to use it. Um, it just took a little bit of getting used to because it was different than the snail runner that we used to have. So I just gotta hold those there for just a second, let them set up. And I'm going to do think the same thing on the other side. Not too heavy on the glue. You don't want big globs of it, just thin lines. And I'm making sure that 
my ends kind of meet up. And they do. And then we just want to press. Now this is, um, the sides are fairly flexible here. So if you want to make them a little bit stronger, you can just take a strip of fresh freesia and that is the same length. So this length, remember, was five and a quarter. So if we brought in our paper trimmer and we wanted a five and a quarter inch length, I would probably make it a tad bit smaller than five and a quarter, only because it's got to fit in there. So I'd probably take, go to five and a quarter and go one tick mark back, which is five and three sixteenths. But I know a lot of you don't like eighths, so I know you're surely not going to like sixteenths. And then the height of the box, remember, was one and a quarter. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to one and a quarter and I'm going to go one tick mark back. That's just so my stuff doesn't really bow in. So now I can see that I can just put this right in here. It doubles up that wall, makes it a little bit sturdier. This is really an optional step. It's really up to you. Now, if you wanted to hide these um, overlapping pieces, you could have, instead of cutting on the long parts, those tabs on the long parts, you could have cut them on the sides and then they would be hidden. You could also add some pieces like I'm doing right now if you wanted to. Some boxes you can cut so that there's they're double walled to begin with, but um, for this size box, I would need something larger than eight and a half by 11. And so that's why that's not working out for me here. Because the only 12 by 12 I have currently is basic white or thick, uh, yeah, basic white and basic black. and. The white would work, but I really wanted some color here. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the little treats in there. I'm gonna arrange it so my little bows are up. Let's see. So we have something that looks like that. You really probably could get away with making this four inches wide. I think I, pro I think the directions I'm going to give you are for four inches wide. I did a four inch wide one earlier and I thought, well, maybe I want to make it a little bit wider, but I do think I like it four inches wide instead. Just something a little different. So this definitely has plenty of room in it. You could line it also with some designer series paper in the bottom if you wanted to. Um, I don't want to, but you could. So there we have that. And I'm not going to put a lid on this. I'm just going to make this a tray. But I do want a little wrap around it. So I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece of designer series paper um, that is one and a half inches wide. And this happens to be 12 inches long. And I know that this middle section is four and a quarter. I'm not really going to fuss too much about where this gets scored but I will go ahead and I'm just going to go to the four mark score it and then I'm going to go four and a quarter beyond that so eight and a quarter so this is going to give me if I fold it I probably could have done, um, instead of eight and a quarter, I probably could have done eight and one mark past, just because it's wrapping around something that's exactly four and a quarter. I want it a little bit bigger. So you can play around with that. And you can see now I've got these pieces that fit nicely. 
So from this score mark, I want to go one and a quarter, maybe a little bit extra because it's got to wrap around something. So I'm going to take my piece here and I'm going to go one and a quarter back. And I want to go a little bit extra. I'm not even really measuring. I'm just going a little bit extra. Well, I'm measuring the one and a quarter. So here I'm going to find this fold line right here. My fold line is in the ditch. And I see this is at um, 3 and 5 eighths. So if I go to 2 and 5 eighths and 2 and 3 eighths, that's 1 and a quarter. And I'm going to go back a little bit. You could also, instead of go, scoring it on your, um, instead of scoring it right on your trimmer, you could just sort of approximate it and, and finger score it. So what I mean by that is sort of wrap it around, like crease where it's gonna fold, where it's supposed to fold, and then you're just gonna put this together. I like to use my paper trimmer because I'm good at math. So the numbers don't scare me. And I like the crisp straight lines. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just put this together. Now, what I like to do here actually, so that I know that it's nice and flat, if I go ahead and just lay this down Score it on t and uh, fold it on top of itself. A little extra glue running off here. Now I have this wrap that I can slip right on. Now I have this section right here, and I need a glue. I need a, an eraser to take that off. Um, but I'm going to cover it up because I want to decorate this. I don't want to just have it a tray with this little weird band around it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take a piece of basic white. Actually, this is the thick basic white. And I'm going to get my two inch, uh, this is a two and a half inch punch out. Stampin' Up! doesn't currently carry a two and a half inch punch, I don't think. Um, but I happen to have one. If you have one of the circle dies, you could do that. You could also do a rectangle. But I wanted to do this. And then I'm gonna bring in a, a stamp. I'm gonna bring in my Easter Bunny set. Now, we do have a coordinating punch for this, but not for the particular bunny that I'm going to be using. And I'm not gonna stamp the full bunny because the full bunny does not fit on here. Let me go ahead and bring in a scrap piece of paper. I've got my bunny all mounted. I need my Memento Black ink. And I'm just gonna stamp most of them right here. Make sure his hands get on there because his little folded hands are so adorable. I'm gonna stamp a greeting that comes in that same set. It's called, it says an Easter treat for you. Uh, by the way, let me show you the stamp set in case you don't remember it from last week. So it's got all these little cute little bunnies. They are so adorable. Um, the punch will be back in sometime, um, maybe May, I think, for this little guy. Um, so if you like this set for years to come, this is a great little set. I doubt it will carry over. Um, so you may want to, at the time that you're going to be viewing this, it's probably too late to order this for this Easter. However, it might get um, put onto the last chance list. And I'm guessing that um, if it does, then the punch will probably uh, be at a percentage uh, off. Even though it's just coming back in store. Oh, wait, if it comes back in May, it'll miss that. I don't know how they're going to handle that. Maybe it is carrying over. I don't know. I really don't know anything more until, um, more than you do until just before things happen, when, especially where it's um, with regard to retiring things. I'm gonna take my Fresh Freesia Blend 
There's color in his ears, a little bit of his nose. This guy's so cute. I'm gonna bring in my crumb cake. This is the light crumb cake. And we're just gonna add in. I could keep my bunny white, but there's a lot of white here. So I do want, I do want his tummy white. And so I'm just gonna color right around here. I have to give him a little decoration. I should have left well enough alone. Close enough. Yeah, that's good. All right, and then we're just going to put this on here, and that covers up this seam. It's, that's why it's important to have the seam in the middle. It's okay to have the seam on the back because nobody's really going to look over here, um, but I like to hide the seam whenever possible. I'll just go ahead and bring in a couple of dimensionals here. just want to make sure that they stay relatively close together so that they stay on this little strip. I know you all saw that jump in there, but I'm not going to go after it right now. And so there we have a cute little gift tray of treats. All right, so now I have all these little diamonds and I just brought in a piece of basic white cardstock and let's see if what we can do with these guys. I'm going to begin with just taking my green glue, putting a little bit of glue on the back of this, and I'm gonna put this in a little bit from the edge. I probably should have started with a colored piece, well, one that was a little bit more solid, so that you could see. I'm just leaving a little bit of space up here at the top and over here at the edge. And let's go ahead and bring in another you do have choices because you, this is two-sided paper. Um, so let's see. Put those points together. Do the same thing up here. So you, now you can see, I think, a little bit more of the little white space that I have at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one more. So I believe you get 10 diamonds out of one die cut. And so I'm just alternating the way the diamonds point. So here they were going up left and down right. Here they were going up right and down left. Up left and down right. Just alternating them. And that green glue gives me a little bit of wiggle time, remember. And maybe I just do one more across. I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. Kind of. All right, now I'm not going to be able to get another one over there. So I'm going to just stop right there. And then I'm going to keep going. So my next one would be the purple so it helps if you have your diamonds all organized to begin with and now i'm going to do the same kind of thing i'm going to line these guys up i'm going to put them right together so this was going up left this is going down left and then the next one would be green. So I just keep grabbing in the same order. So 
So look, we have a finished card. And why did I jump ahead so fast? Well, because an alarm went off on my phone as I was doing this video, and it apparently stops the video when that happens. Um, I thought it had kept going, but I guess it did not. So I finished this and I was working on it this way. And so there were seven that I could get across a four inch strip. And then I had four of these little kind of wavy lines. So I used 28. I had two diamonds left over from cutting out these treats. If I turn it this way, can you see the optical illusion? I mean, you should be able to see it this way as well, but I think it looks better this way. These are a bunch of cubes. So here, the white pieces are the tops of the cubes, and these are the sides. So it looks just like a bunch of um, cubes stacked. And as a math teacher, I've seen this pattern lots of times, and former math teacher. And um, so this really appealed to me. And all I did was mounted it on a piece of fresh freesia and stamped Happy Easter. And it really just needs a couple of embellishments now, I think. Let's use the blue from these glossy dot assortments. This is balmy blue, which is, um, or it might be pool party. Um, it's a color that's in here. Let's go ahead and just put a couple on here. These are a little bit harder to get off with my take your pick tool. I think I might want the spatula end. So if I pick this up, come on, Sharon. This guy's not being cooperative. Oh, now he's under the plastic. Oh my goodness. Here. We've got something that looks like that see what happens when I put a few more of these guys on. Um, I'm not sure where to put them on here. Maybe on top of a top of a cube here. Maybe one more. Let's try a little guy. And maybe we'll go right there. So pretty simple card, um, time consuming, but not hard. And so for those of you who don't like to waste, here is an option. Now let's see if we can do some other kind of card treatment with some scraps. So I have this, which was cut from um, our the first box that we made and I'm going to bring in a ruler and I want to measure up my grid paper would come in really handy right now I'm going to measure up an inch from the bottom on both sides and lightly make a pencil mark then I'm going to connect those two now if I had my grid paper handy which I should show you this. I don't like to use the grid paper on video because the white, you know, white cardstock on that white background is a little difficult for you to see on camera. Let me bring in this grid paper. Now this was something special uh, that demonstrators could attend. It's called On Stage. It was a demonstrator only event, but I'm gonna use this grid over here and if I, if I put my card stock at the bottom and line it up on one of these lines, these good lines, then you can see that it's much easier. I don't even need to make to measure those first two inch marks. I can just go up here, put my ruler at the base, and draw those draw that connecting line as well. I just want it pretty faint. I am going to cover it all up. We'll bring out our glue again. And I'm going to start with this one. I haven't decided whether or not I'm, my glue is clogged. Hold on. 
I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to go ahead and um, All right, here we go. I'm gonna put tip to tip right on that line. And I'm going, I think I'm gonna alternate. Am I gonna alternate? Let's see, I could do that or I could do all the same. I think I'm gonna alternate. You don't have to lay it out perfectly to get it going. So I wanna make sure the points stay on the line. If they don't, they're not gonna cover that up. Now I happen to have a little bit of a glob over here. I should be using my silicone sheet, but I tried to unclog my glue, because I've been using it and just keeping it out and open, it clogged up on me. So when I unclogged it, I got a big, big spray glob right there that I'm gonna use. And I'm, I'm gonna put my glue cover back on since I have enough of this over here to use. Let's see, so we wanna go all I'm doing is kind of smooshing that in there, picking it up so a lot of it is covered. And we have one more here. Now it will bother me that the ends are not symmetrical. So I'm gonna to have to fix that. So I'll probably trim this down. We'll definitely trim this end edge off. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I think bring my trimmer in. So I'm just playing here. I really have, I have not made this card before. I'm just seeing what I can get out of it. Let's see if I go to five inches. It's not quite symmetrical, but I can live with this. I can live with this. I think I'm going to trim off a little bit more over here, just so I can get my diamonds closer to the edge. So we have something like that. And then I'll do some sort of treatment up here at the top. Let's see though. So this is measuring about three and three quarters by five. That's good. That's half an inch off a standard quarter sheet in both directions, so that's good. Now I do see I have a little bit of glue that's kind of smeared out. And Stampin' Up! used to carry these adhesive removers. You can get them at the dollar store or should I say the dollar twenty-five store? Because that's what it is now. You know, and I, I, um, I, I don't disparage them for going up on their prices. The prices of everything goes up. Nothing ever goes down. So, um, however, it's a problem when the when the store's name is a Dollar Tree, and it's a dollar twenty-five for everything. So I don't think they were thinking about that when they named named the store. All right, so there I have that. Now, what can we do? Um, what would look good over here? And I could use it on any of the sides. I think we're gonna put just a, a little something here. Let's bring in our bunnies again. And we'll bring in Let's see, which bunny? Let's go ahead and bring in this, this bunny right here. I 
this is the one that matches the punch that's out of stock. So I could put him right down, right down here. Yeah. So this card will not, you will not get in your card kit. This is just an extra. You will get the base for this card. You will get the pieces that you need for this card. Obviously, these diamonds will be coming out of um, things that I cut for you. So they, the card stock and the diamonds will all match together. They'll coordinate with whatever I give you. I'm going to give you all the die cuts that come from all the projects that you make. So you will get enough to make two of these, and then you'll get the diamonds that go with, that are associated. You will get the consumables to make two of these. You will get the consumables to make one of these. and you will get the consumable to make two of these. I missed something. Oh, that's the one I missed is the one with the hearts. Where'd that one go? This one. So two of the windows, just different ones of each window. Supplies to make this, two of these. So you'll be getting enough to make two, three, the other one four, um, and then two of these, so six more. So you'll have enough to make 10 crackers. You'll have the, um, enough to make two trays and two cards with the class kit. So you will be all set for Easter. Let's go ahead and use the gray here. As this dries, these colors will blend more closely together. Now, let's see. I need a little bit of a pink ear. Let's bring in some petal pink. Just a really, just a soft hint of pink. All right. We need to mat this. I think. What I want to do, my bunny's outlined in black, I'm going to give a very small mat of black and then mount this on a piece of balmy blue. So this was a piece that measured three and three quarters by five. I've just cut an eighth of an inch larger on both dimensions, so three and seven eighths, two tick marks before the four, and by five and an eighth, which is two tick marks afterwards. We'll get some adhesive. I've got my seal handy, so let's go ahead and do my seal. this up on dimensionals. All right, I've gone ahead and die cut 
this little tag. It is one of the, where'd the die go? It's one of the tag options in the die set. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that up using a dimensional. Just tied a bit of the twine on here. And just put that right there. That's a quick and simple card. Just have to decorate the inside. But again, a, a very simple use for these for these pieces. All right, so here are just some cards that you can use with your scraps. Now, I know I said just a moment ago that I was going to give you the supplies to make two of these, but what I will do is I will make give you the supplies to make two of these, but I will include two of these little black pieces in case you would like to cut the white down and so just use this kind of design in case you're not all that thrilled to have to um, glue down all of these diamonds. I really do like the look of this, but it does take a little bit more time. So it just matters of how much time you have and how much you want to put into it. But you will be able to make two cards. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Now it's probably a little too late for you to start thinking about purchasing a Cracker and Treat Box die for yourself for this Easter. However, if you place an order of $35 or more in my online store, I'm going to be sending you the supplies so that you can make up to 10 of them yourself, plus two cards. So I will get those out as soon as you place your order. Usually I wait until um, the following Tuesday to mail. However, I know there's a little bit of time sensitivity, so I want to be respectful of that. And I've gone ahead and prepared some kits so I can get them out as soon as you place your order. But orders are due by 7 p.m. on Sunday, April 2nd. Um, that's just to allow me to be able to um, get everything cut and mailed out on Tuesday. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am happy to serve you in any way that I can.